Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Elisa Parenti. Over the next several weeks, the County Council will be grappling with how to pay for improvements that are part of the White Flint sector plan. As Susan Kennedy reports, this task comes as officials look to White Flint as the next urban center of the county. Alisa, the question is, who is going to pay for the more than $1 billion in projects that are part of this White Flint plan? The proposal is a 40-year blueprint of growth for this area, and it includes new schools, roads, and other infrastructure improvements. The White Flint Master Plan was approved last spring by the Council. It calls for a combination of several financing mechanisms, including development districts, temporary taxes, and added fees for developers. The first stage of the development calls for significant upgrades to Rockville Pike. There are a lot of moving parts, which is going to be important because if we do this, it's going to have to be a very equitable distribution between people who are building new things, people who currently own things. We want to encourage a lot of redevelop redevelopment to occur. So what you don't want to do is have somebody spend a lot of money both in building their new building and uh, contributing to infrastructure right next to somebody who is happy to stay with a one-story building and isn't contributing anything to anything because it doesn't provide the level of density and it really makes things much more difficult. So we're trying to come up with kind of the right carrots and the right sticks to make sure that everyone is contributing but everybody sees the benefits to it as well. The plans for White Flint are critical to the economic future of Montgomery County. This vision will create more than 13 million feet in commercial space, and recent analysis found that this new White Flint could bring in as much as $7 billion in tax revenue over the next 40 years. Though how to pay for the project might still be undecided, it's clear the commitment to its success is there. There's very little margin for error um, because of where it is. Um, you know, we had issues with Clarksburg where it's a greenfields development, which means that there wasn't anything there before in a lot of the places where development occurred. So, yeah, it didn't go great, but there was a little bit of margin for error. You already have a lot of people living there. You already have a lot of businesses there. You already have a lot of people that drive through there or take the metro through there every day. If we don't have it well coordinated, well structured, um, have, a, have the right timeline in place, it could be disruptive not just for folks who think they want to build something new and exciting, but for everybody who already does something there right now. And so there's not a lot of margin for us. So it's going to require a lot of work on the front end to make sure that happens. The council will take up the issue of the financing plan in the coming weeks. I'm Susan Kennedy for the County Report this week. Thanks, Susan. County officials are considering appointing a person who would oversee the financing and infrastructure of future county development. Council Member Phil Andrews says he believes the position is necessary as the county looks forward to the redevelopment of White Flint and Gaithersburg West. I think uh, what happened in Clarksburg is a good example of why it's important to have a person in the executive branch who is responsible for the implementation of the master plan to help ensure that it is implemented in a timely and effective way. We've had uh, some very big master plans adopted, the White Flint plan, for example, as well as the uh, Great Seneca Science Quarter master plan. Uh, they're complex. The White Flint financing plan will be a big uh, issue. And so it is important, I think, to have someone in the executive branch who is tasked with the responsibility of following through on the implementation of it. Uh, this does not mean that there would have to be a new position created. What it means is that someone would need to be assigned this responsibility. At the corner of Blair Mill Road and East West Highway in Silver Spring, a new affordable housing apartment building has just opened. Argent Apartments is a 96-unit building that will provide safe, affordable housing to families and provide a boost to the South Silver Spring community. Leaders say the project is a good example of how partnerships between local government and the state of Maryland can expand opportunities for working families. We have more students in Montgomery County schools and the increasing numbers bring increasing needs into the classroom. How that plays into future budget numbers was part of a recent discussion between the Board of Education and County Council members who say this year working together on the numbers will be critical. Our conversation was pretty wide ranging but it, it really focused on the numbers of children coming to us in poverty. And this is a national trend. Um, there was a report recently in the Washington Post and the New York Times that approximately one in four children live in poverty, but in Montgomery County it is growing in an extraordinary way. 
and this um, adds an educational load onto the school system because it increases the numbers of children who need special attention uh, in the classroom, children who do not speak English as their first language. And so we've seen this trend coming for a while, but today the council and the school board got to really sit down and focus on what that means for us in terms of our budget. Up County residents marked the ninth year since the September 11th attacks in a unique tribute to first responders with the opening of the new Germantown fire station. It is a special honor to remember the courageous, brave emergency responders and the sacrifices that they made on September 11th. Milestone Fire and Rescue Station number 34 opened on Boland Farm Road on that significant day. Construction on the $16 million facility took one year and it meets the U.S. Green Building Council's LEED standards. Leaders who worked hard to bring the firehouse to fruition stress the importance of its location and the lives that will likely be saved as a result of its creation. The bottom line is the people who work here are the absolute uh, security of our whole area, our, our district. We can, go to, we can go to bed and sleep at night because we know that we're being well protected. Fire and rescue personnel marked the opening of the station by pushing engine number 734 into the bay, and that is a department tradition. Children at Rock Creek Forest Elementary School and the surrounding neighborhoods are getting a leg up on safety with some pedestrian protection improvements being made. The goal is to reduce the speed of vehicles, calm traffic, and enhance safety. The Department of Transportation installed a concrete island where walkers can safely wait for a chance to cross the busy street. The improvement project narrowed the travel lanes on the road to reduce speeds. Also, a marked crosswalk and school crossing signs were installed. Today, we're here to demonstrate the usefulness of this refuge island and to let you know how important it is to protect lives and to make certain that our school nearby and the children, the teachers, the families, and all who visit here are protected. To be able to provide a safe crosswalk such as the one that's right behind me so that way our students and their families can cross between our school and and the shopping center that's over here means a great deal in, in order to provide that safety for um, students. Coming up on County Report this week, an important update on funding for broadband services in our county. And Montgomery County Public Schools have some news worth celebrating about how our students are doing on the crucial SAT college entrance exam. I'm Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer. Coming up next, we'll take you to all the action from Rockville's Hispanic Heritage Celebration. That's coming up when County Report This Week continues. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? Now there is only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls. 311. MC 311 is Montgomery County Government's new online and telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Remember, call 311 to get it done. to save your life from an ugly, reckless driving death. Don't answer yet. There's more. Act now by slowing down, and we'll guarantee you complete satisfaction. That's awesome! In the real world, there is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. There's only you. Speak up. Whoa, Andy, slow down. Driving is serious business. When you're talking or texting on a cell phone, your reaction time can be impaired. That's why Maryland passed a law that bans the use of handheld cell phones while driving. If you choose to ignore the law, the results can be perilous.
Welcome back. The state of Maryland will get $115 million in federal stimulus money to build high-speed broadband Internet service. Senator Barbara Mikulski says the grant will help connect a patchwork of fiber optic networks. It will also result in better services for everyone who lives here. Today we have a great announcement where Maryland has won a competitive broadband grant of $115 million to take broadband bandwidth to every single county in Maryland, turning Maryland into... We've always been one Maryland, but as of this grant, we will be one digital Maryland, taking ideas, opportunity, jobs for the future to every single county in Maryland. What is so great about this project, the whole state coming together and working like crazy, and look what happened. I mean, it just shows that One Maryland works, and we can be a huge part of it, and we were a huge player in this, and we're thrilled. And for moms and dads uh, gathering with their, their kids around kitchen tables and communities throughout Maryland, it means that no neighborhood is going to be left behind. Maryland is better connected than most states, and Maryland has a better economy than most states. Maryland is better uh, poised to take advantage of the opportunities in this new economy than other states. But Maryland has challenges in, in western Maryland, mountain Maryland, the eastern shore, southern Maryland, and it's important that we leave no county behind. This broadband grant will build a super information highway where broadband has not gone or if it has gone, it's been too skinny, and it's been a two-lane highway, and now we're going to be a Zoom Zoom digital superhighway. Montgomery County is really going to see a significant growth in our fiber infrastructure, especially when it comes to all of our schools. We have been battling for many years trying to get our infrastructure so that we can have high-speed broadband for all the schools, and we've managed to get all the high schools and middle schools, but this is going to close the gap very, very seriously for the remainder of the elementary schools, which means all of the education systems that are based on high-speed Internet and the need of bandwidth to get education processes for distance learning will be accomplishable in the next couple of years. So this is tremendous for growth for Montgomery County relative to having broadband and the capabilities of the Internet across all of our school systems. Well, Montgomery County is a leader in closing the achievement gap among our kids and broadband Internet, the access and what Montgomery County is doing under Ike Leggett's leadership to connect our schools and our kids to the opportunities of the future and the information of today is really why Montgomery County is such a strong part of our state and such a job generator. MCPS graduates this year set an all-time record on the SAT, scoring an average of 1,653 out of 2,400 on the crucial college entrance exam. Students from Montgomery County outpaced Maryland graduates by 151 points and their national peers by 144 points. African American and Hispanic students in our county posted the strongest gains, raising last year's average composite scores by 49 and 54 respectively further narrowing the achievement gap on the SAT. Students in the class of 2010 have set a new record for Montgomery County Public Schools, producing the district's highest ever SAT scores. With a combined average score of 1653, MCPS students far outranked their state and national peers on the college entrance exam. The average score nationally was 1509, while the average in Maryland was 1502. The district's SAT performance was strong across all racial and ethnic groups. African American and Hispanic students produced the biggest gains. MCPS has used numerous strategies to get these results. The SAT is at the top of our seven keys structure. We talk about 1650 on the SATs, and that if you can score 1650, you are college ready. So we back mapped all of that strategically. We have encouraged all kids to have rigorous exposure. We hold teachers accountable, and we certainly monitor the data. At Paint Branch High School, scores rose 36 points from the previous year, and more students took the exam. Principal Jeanette Dixon credits that success to many factors, including access to advanced placement courses. We don't have any gates uh, to our AP program. And I think that uh, those things, having rigor in the instructional program, is really, really important. 
and uh, of course we encourage our students uh, to participate and uh, the counselors do women's work in that as well. If kids have had the exposure of AP classes and they go to college, that they fare better than those kids that never had an AP class. We have the data that indicates that. At Paint Branch, there's a culture of high expectations, and students there know that their teachers, counselors, and administrators will do everything they can to prepare them for success in college. Teachers help us go over and like they teach us to new techniques and different teachers, you know, have different perspectives on how you should answer things. So it helps you like, you know, think different ways about how to answer the question right. So scores are really important. Scoring 1650 on the SAT and completing rigorous courses are key indicators that students are ready for college. Leslie Maxwell, Montgomery County Public Schools. September is Hispanic Heritage Month, and the city of Rockville celebrated in a very big way. Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more on that, and she joins us now. Bridget? That's right, Elisa. 13.3% of Rockville's population is made up of Hispanics, so it made sense to throw a party in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. It was also a chance to shed some light on the many community services available to the Latino community. hundreds to town square as the city celebrated the richness of Rockville's Hispanic community. This is the celebration of the Hispanic Heritage Month and this is the first time that the city is putting this event together to celebrate Hispanic heritage in the city of Rockville and to also celebrate the uh, all the wonderful things that the Hispanic community is doing to build the city and to make it to be the place that everyone wants to live and a special place to work and to grow and to have a family. Produced in partnership with the Rockville Latino Alliance and Capital One Bank, the event was intended to celebrate the Hispanic culture, but also as an opportunity to bring awareness to the many community services available to Latinos in Rockville. A lot of people in this city is from different places in Latin America, and it just makes you feel like you're part of here, even though you are from Latin America. So, you know, it's just a little bit of home, but far away from home. So I think it is important to have that and to celebrate our heritage, even though we're here. Spread the culture of the, each South American country with the richest costume and dances. And it's just to show the American people all this richest culture that we have. To learn more about Rockville City Services and how to get involved, go to the city's website at rockvillemd.gov and click on Neighborhood Resources. For County Report This Week, I'm Bridget Breuer. Thanks, Bridget. Still to come on County Report This Week, Kathy Stanhope has our Pet of the Week, so keep it here. I'm home and I love it. I'm home where I belong. I'm home, and I love it. I'm home, where I belong. It's always nice to come home, but these days, many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable is a free program from the U.S. government that has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these, and we want to help you. I'm home. Find out now what your options are. Go to makinghomeaffordable.gov or call 1-888-995-HOPE. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home, I'm home, where I belong. Using energy wisely can be magical. Turn off lights. Use energy-saving light bulbs. And turn off computers and game systems when not in use. Grab a grown-up and go online to energy.gov slash kids. <laughs> I'm a mommy. I love kids. I'm responsible, loving, nurturing. <gasps> Mama's coming, baby! <laughs> ah! don't have to be perfect 
to be a perfect parent. Welcome back. Local golfers had an opportunity this week to play around for a good cause. MCTV's Michael Brown has the story. The Woodmont Country Club in Rockville played host this week to the Montgomery College Foundation Golf Classic. 144 golfers participated in this year's event, which kicked off with the Cutterama competition. The tournament, celebrating its 25th year, is a fundraiser for the Montgomery College Foundation's Student Scholarship Program. Over the past 24 years, the Golf Classic has established itself as one of the premier charitable events for higher education in Montgomery County. Private funding generated through the Foundation is instrumental in providing the kind of partnerships and programs that bring national recognition to Montgomery College. Since 1986, the Classic has generated over $1 million in support of the Foundation's annual giving program, providing unrestricted assistance for scholarships and other critical programs requiring immediate assistance. Thanks, Michael. For more information on the Golf Classic, go to the college's website, montgomerycollege.edu slash golf tournament. Now let's head over to the Humane Society, where Kathy Stanhope has our Pet of the Week. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with the Montgomery County Humane Society with your Pet of the Week. And right now we're just showing you many of the cats we have here at the shelter. We currently have over 111 cats at the shelter and dozens and dozens of other cats in foster care. We have a great need for you to come down and look at the cat, meet a cat, and take at least a cat home with you because they really do need good homes. Most of the animals here have not been given up for cause. I mean, they haven't been given up because they have a problem or a personality problem or an undesirable characteristic. Most of the animals here have been given up because the owners have moved or developed allergies or just don't have the financial means to take care of a pet anymore. We have so many cats here, and if you're looking for any type of cat, I'm sure that we have something that you would be interested in. Also, we get 5 to 25 animals brought into the shelter on any given day. So if you don't see an animal you like on any time that you're here, come back again in a week or visit us on the web at mchumane.org and you'll see different animals. We would like to also tell you about our foster program. Because some cats don't do well here at the shelter, or maybe litters of kittens or a mom with her litter, we have wonderful people who foster. That means they take the animal into their home, some of the expenses are shared with the county, and it gives the, the animal a chance to have more of a home environment and it's a lot less stressful for them. And we're always looking for people to foster. If you can't adopt a animal now, please consider fostering. Call us at 240-773-5960 or visit us on the web at mchumane.org. Thanks. Thanks, Kathy. Coming up, Brookside Gardens offers special gallery spaces you might be interested in. And we'll take you to the Silver Spring Jazz Festival. Keep it here on County Report this week. Hello, I'm Mike Bruin, and I'm here on the set for What's Bruin in Montgomery County. And we just want to invite you to join us as we have conversations with department heads, agency directors, police and fire chiefs, and many more. We'll do topical issues on things that are important here in Montgomery County, and yes, in a nice setting with coffee involved. So join us, grab a cup, settle back for 30 minutes each week, and find out what's brewing right here in Montgomery County. Montgomery County law requires all bicyclists under the age of 18 to wear a safety helmet when riding or being carried on a bicycle. County police highly recommend that not only children wear them, but adults as well. This includes on roadways, trails, and sidewalks. Bicyclists should follow all motor vehicle traffic rules and signs, including stopping at stop signs and traffic lights. Hey Speedy, are gas prices getting to you? Drive the posted speed and improve mileage by 15% or more. It's like saving over 50 cents a gallon. Better mileage also means less emissions and smog. Now that's a green idea. 
Welcome back to County Report this week. Now we head out to Brookside Gardens where Leslie McDermott has some information about services and space you may not realize is available to all of us. Are you an artist or a photographer looking for a place to display your work? Well then Brookside Gardens has four gallery areas inside the visitor center. We showcase local, affordable, original artwork by groups of artists and by individual artists. And the exhibits are seen by more than 20,000 visitors every month. The Brookside Gardens Galleries is a fantastic place to exhibit your work. One, because it is seen by so many people, and we also help to promote the uh, art exhibits here. Another added bonus is that many of these pieces are for sale. If you're looking for some original artwork, this is a great place to come. And I can attest to that because I have personally added to my home collection over the years. If you're interested in learning about displaying your artwork here at the gardens, then go to our website at www.brooksidegardens.org and download an application. But don't delay because we are already booked into 2013. The Silver Spring Jazz Festival just celebrated its seventh year, and as AMTV reports, this was one to remember. This is the seventh annual uh, Silver Spring Jazz Festival, and it's uh, a sort of end of summer celebration that we've been doing here in downtown Silver Spring uh, since 2004 and it's just really caught on. It's captured uh, uh, listeners and attendees from not only the Silver Spring community but beyond. I mean our whole music is about trying to get people up and dancing and having a good time. It's not about us, it's about the connection with the people out front so we're happy to have more. You know, it's, it makes it fun. This thing gets bigger every year and to see they've moved it now from they had it over in the vacant area over off Georgia now it's here. This is unbelievable. This is great. And then you got the, the video screen out here. This thing gets better and better. It's an awesome venue. The venue is great here and uh, really an honor to be here for, you know, for Wimble Club and a uh, great crowd, great weather. Uh, the sound is great, so it's a be beautiful gig for us. Very proud of um, Silver Spring, and I'm very pleased that I got the opportunity to play at the festival. And I only live a few blocks away. That's even better, you know. I could have actually walked over. <laughs> So it was, it was wonderful, and I'm very, very grateful. Silver Springs had an interesting time the last few weeks, you know, so it's always nice to see folks come back out, enjoy themselves. We always seem to get lucky with the weather, and uh, so it's just a great festival, a lot of fun, and I'm glad to see so many people coming out. Have mercy on me. That does it for County Report this week. Join us at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Elisa Parenti. Thanks for watching. Don't miss guitarist and singer Leon Redbone when he comes to MC's Culture Arts Center on October 1st. Redbone performs jazz, blues standards, and Tin Pan Alley classics with a smooth blend of skilled instrumentalism and humor. Want an inside look at life at Montgomery College? Then get it straight from those who know best, our students. Nine students from a variety of backgrounds and campuses have been chosen to blog about their MC experiences. Connect with them, check out their uncensored entries, and leave a comment or question. They're sure to respond. And reserve your seats now for Harry Connick Jr.'s musical, The Happy Elf, running from November 12th through the 28th at the Perilla Performing Arts Center on MC's Rockville campus. The Happy Elf is presented by Montgomery College and Adventure Theater, the longest-running children's theater in the area. 
For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website.